Good morning. This video presentation of Pulsifeeder is to discuss our Pulsatron uh, metering pump. We want to talk about the safety warnings that are important for you. We want to talk about the material supplied in the box for you. We want to talk about its features and its benefits and the installation and operation. And eventually we want to talk about then the cop kit and the repair parts that will be provided for you. The key features of the Pulsatron series metering pump include safe easy priming, easy installation and pump settings, rated hot for continuous duty. This means the pump continues to make its rated output and maximum pressure even at its operating temperature. State-of-the-art double ball guided check valves ensure metering performance. Easy maintenance with cop kits. The Pulsatron series pumps are repeatable, reliable, and economical. The Pulsatron series pump is classified as an electronically driven diaphragm pump. The circuit board supplies a voltage to the solenoid which generates a magnetic field. This pulls the armature forward against the spring tension. This also pulls the shaft forward which has a diaphragm connected to it. The diaphragm displaces the fluid in the head through the discharge valve. When the solenoid is de-energized by the circuit board, the magnetic field collapses. The diaphragm and the armature return to the original position under the force of the springs. This action draws the fluid into the suction valve and the cycle repeats. This video is not intended to replace the installation operation manual provided with the pump. Read and understand the manual completely before working with metering pump systems in any way. When installing a metering pump, the location of the pump is one of the most important considerations. For wall or shelf mounting, connect the suction tubing to the suction valve of the chemical pump. Tubing should be long enough so that the foot valve strainer assembly hangs about one to two inches above the bottom of the chemical tank. A flooded suction or tank mount installation is preferred. For optimum performance, the distance from the pump head and the lowest possible fluid level in the supply tank must not exceed five feet. The injection point must be higher than the top of the solution supply tank to prohibit gravity feeding. Installation of an anti-siphon valve will prevent this from occurring. As we indicated earlier, the suction tubing needs to be trimmed so that the strainer is an inch or two above the bottom of the tank. This will prevent premature clogging of the strainer. Now you are ready to mount your pump on your tank. The first step of installing the discharge tubing is to install the bleed valve. There is an O-ring in your accessory kit which is installed in the discharge valve groove. Then the bleed valve is attached to the top of the discharge valve. The discharge tubing is connected to the top of the bleed valve. The return tubing is connected to the side of the bleed valve and then placed in the top of the tank. All of these fittings are to be tightened hand tight. To make connecting the tube easier, they may be warmed prior to placing them on the compression fittings. Ensure 
that the injection valve is placed vertically in the bottom of the water line and the tip of the injection valve is in the center of flow. The tip of the injector can be cut if required. In order to prime your pump, plug the cord into an appropriate receptacle. Please use a surge protector for the power supply of the cord. Be sure that the stroke length is adjusted to 100% and that the stroke rate is adjusted to 100%. Never adjust the stroke length while the pump is not running. At this point you're ready to use the bleed valve. Open the bleed valve by turning counterclockwise. This will allow your liquid to flow out the return line and into your tank. Once you have a steady stream of pulsating liquid, close the bleed valve. This causes the liquid to flow out the discharge side of the bleed valve and into your injector. It may take one or two minutes for the liquid to fill this line. The Pulsatron A Plus pump has two adjustments. This adjustment is the stroke length adjustment and this adjustment is the pulse rate adjustment. The stroke length adjustment adjusts the amount of flow per stroke. The stroke rate adjustment adjusts the number of strokes per minute. At 100 percent there would be 125 strokes per minute. As an example, for a six gallon a day pump with the stroke rate adjustment at 50 percent, there would be three gallons per day produced by the pump. If we adjust the stroke length to 50 percent, then that will reduce or the flow rate to one and a half gallons per day. In this video, we are going to discuss how to change a cop kit on a Pulsatron series pump. The cop kit contains the discharge valve, the suction valve, the pump, pump head and diaphragm, the bolts for the head, prior to using the cop kit and installing the parts, you need to have appropriate safety equipment. Check the MSDS sheet for the chemical you're using to know if you need safety glasses, gloves, etc. First unplug the pump and release the system pressure. Then flush the system of all chemicals. Finally, disconnect the tubing or piping. In order to ensure optimum performance, the Pulsifron series metering pumps require periodic inspection, cleaning, or replacement of the liquid in parts. It is generally recommended that the pump is inspected every six months. Depending on the application, the maintenance frequency for the pump will vary. Pulsatron Keep On Pumping Kits, or COP Kits for short, include the most common items for preventative maintenance. However, other system components such as suction and discharge tubing and all fittings should be checked for potential problems. The first step in replacing the COP kit is to remove the wet end. Once the head screws are loose, remove the head from the pump. Then remove the diaphragm by grasping one edge and rotating it counterclockwise to unscrew the diaphragm. Now we are ready to remove the adapter plate. It pulls directly off away from the shaft. 
To remove the secondary seal, get a small bladed screwdriver. and remove the seal. Prior to installing the secondary seal, it should be lubricated with a silicone based lubricant. Then it is installed over the shaft into the o-ring groove. The adapter has a weep hole at the bottom of one of the sides of the adapter. That weep hole goes down. So the adapter is placed over the shaft with the weep hole down. Before installing the new diaphragm, look at your old diaphragm and discover how many shims are in place on the old diaphragm. This old diaphragm had two shims on it. Keep in mind there could be a shim stuck to the shaft, the end of the shaft. Next, we want to reinstall the new diaphragm. To do that, we need to plug the pump in, adjust the stroke length to 50%. The new diaphragm is installed using the diaphragm, the deflection plate, and the two brass shims. First we need a silicon based lubricant to lubricate the parts. The deflection plate has a radius on one side, that radius goes against the diaphragm, and the brass shims then go behind the deflection plate. Then the diaphragm assembly is threaded on to the end of the shaft, assuring that the adapter plate is in position all the way back. Turn the diaphragm until it stops. Now we will assemble the pump head assembly. The suction valve the pump head and the discharge valve. All three of these parts have arrows on them that indicate the direction of flow. Now we will install the pump head to the pump. We place the head on the pump with the arrows in the direction of flow. Take our screw, add a washer to the screw head, and insert it into the pump. Now we will finish tightening the head screws to the pump. This is done in a diagonal manner. We tighten them like this so that the gap here between the adapter plate and the pump head is even all the way around. Now we will remove the coupling nut from the discharge. Take our O-ring from our cop kit and place it on the discharge valve and reinstall the bleed valve from our pump. 